All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and, and welcome to the sixth edition of our 10 part series, Colleges, uh, Conversation with Colleges. Um, we created this series uh, to give alumni the opportunity to connect and hear from our college deans and vice president of student affairs. Um, again, welcome and good afternoon. My name is Greg Fansler, and I serve as executive director of engagement and alumni relations here at Missouri State. One of our newest bears have been here now five months and it's great to be a bear. Um, I just wanted to um, circle back to the reason in essence for why we're doing this, this series. Um, uh, so our, our deans and, and the vice president of student affairs are just excited to share with you all what is happening on campus today and to celebrate some of the recent achievements that we've had um, that, that is part of our, our capital campaign onward upward. Uh, this impact, this this uh, this campaign has impacted um, this campus in a variety of ways. Um, it's translated into new buildings and scholarships and professorships and much more. And I want to thank all of you who have joined us today, who have supported Missouri State throughout the campaign. We appreciate your time uh, today to, to hear from the College of Business. So it's my pleasure to uh, to turn over the conversation to our distinguished guest. Dean Dave Meinart, and, and, and Dave is the Dean of the College of Business at Missouri State. Um, prior to this role, he served as the Associate Dean for nine years. Um, Dr. Meinart has been responsible for the College of Business Executive Programs, the International Business Programs, the General Business Program on the China campus. Um, he's been part of the College of Business Computing uh, Department and in, in the recent Glass Hall Renovation and Addition Project. Prior to becoming an administrator, Dr. Meinhardt taught a wide variety of information system courses, including program design and development, systems development, information systems and business seminar and computer information systems and project management. Professor Meinhardt has authored over 40 scientific articles, papers, and technical reports. His research has appeared in the Journal of Applied Business Research, Information Strategy, the Executive Journal, Information Resources Management Journal, End user computing management, focus on change management in the handbook of data management. Dr. Meinhardt holds a bachelor's and master's degree from North, Northern Michigan University and a PhD in management information systems from the University of Mississippi. Dean Meinhardt, thank you for being with us this afternoon. We look forward to hearing from you in your presentation. For those of you who are with us, please know that um, when, when Dr. Meinhardt, uh, Dean Meinhardt is done, uh, you'll have an opportunity to connect with him, um, ask him questions through our chat function or the q and I'll be able to moderate those with him. We'll also hear from the Vice President of Advancement, Brent Dunn. He'll be on the call later, um, um, later in a few minutes. So uh, Dr. and Dean Meinhardt, take it away. Well, thank you, Greg. And uh, I wanna welcome everyone today. I always enjoy having an opportunity to talk with our alumni and supporters. It's uh, challenging to think about trying to tell the story of a college in a, a short presentation over a, a webinar, but I'll do my best. And I thought I would start by uh, showing you the building behind me. In fact, let me switch to full screen and get a better look at that. Let me do this. And so a good example of the Onward Upward campaign and what it's really, how it's really impacted campus and the College of Business you're seeing Glass Hall, and some of you, especially if you were here before 2017, don't remember it looking like that. It's because on the east side towards the library, through private donations, we were able to uh, get a project off the ground at a 37,000 foot addition, Robert Gorley Student Success Center. And we were also able to go in and renovate the original building. So it was 1987 vintage, but if you walk through now, it looks like a seamless integration between old and new. Let me jump a slide ahead and, and let you see some of the things that we put in that uh, new building. So in the Robert Gorley Student Success Center, and you can see it up on the top right corner, we've got a beautiful glass family executive boardroom, seats 32 people. And we use that for the campus, and not just the College of Business, but the entire campus uses that, community groups can then use that. The most popular area that we put in the new addition is actually the Jim and Pat Jones reception and meeting room. That room seats over 100 people, flexible seating, unbelievable AV and sound systems. Groups can have meetings in there, cater meals in there. So that's the number one space that's reserved. The American National Insurance Auditorium that we put in seats over 100 people. 
It's used for classes, presentations, panels, student organizations. And again, it's used by the College of Business in the uh, remainder of campus. The Student Success Center houses now our Business Advisement Center. That, uh, we've got 10 advisors that are supporting our undergraduate students. We also have a, a satellite office at the Career Center. And to support the Career Center, when we built out that new space, we put in interview rooms. We have six just beautiful interview rooms. And when those aren't being used by employers, the students can use those as team rooms. Two executive classrooms round out that new addition. And then we have a beautiful atrium uh, that will seat up to 230 people for events. Um, and I say events, lunches and dinners. And we can seat uh, close to 250 people theater style. And we've got a um, uh, 40 by eight foot video wall in there that we can use for presentations when we host groups. In the original building, you wouldn't recognize it if you haven't been back. We've added a graduate programs office on the first floor because we're growing in our graduate programs area. We've got an international business programs on the first floor. That's been added because we've really grown our education abroad, both short-term faculty-led trips and students going abroad for one or more semesters. We've got a number of experiential learning labs, and I'll, I'll dive into that a little bit deeper in the presentation. And then we put in a lot of team and collaboration rooms, uh, four on the first floor, three on the third floor, that have really given students spaces to be able to collaborate. And then if you ask our current students what's the best new addition to the building, it's the Einstein Brothers Bagels, where you can find our students and our faculty uh, networking uh, between and after classes. And so that's been real popular in the building also. So everyone always jokes on campus that, that the College of Business is about the bottom line, and I guess in a way we are. So I'll start with maybe a, a college update with by the numbers. Our fall 21 census, we had 4,775 students, and that's down. It's down in part, you may have heard in the news that there, when the pandemic hit, approximately 1 million college and university students left school or chose not to start in the fall of 20. That's now up to about 1.5 million. So MSU's enrollments are down, not surprisingly, the College of Business enrollments are down. We're starting to see signs that that's gonna pick up again in the fall, and we'll see how quickly we get back to more of a baseline. Those students uh, break down about 18% now are graduate, and 82% uh, obviously in our undergraduates, that 18% uh, is up considerably over the last decade, and it's continuing to grow. We have 100 full-time faculty now and 62 part-time faculty. And those part-time faculty are all business professionals. Some live in the Springfield area and come on campus to teach, but many now are teaching for us online in our undergraduate and graduate online programs. Those faculty are uh, spread across seven academic departments. Currently, those departments are offering 15 undergraduate programs and with uh, 23 options available to our undergrads. And I'll, I'll pop up a slide in a moment to give you a sense of the breadth and depth of those undergraduate offerings. We have eight undergraduate programs now available online. That's another growth area for us. We're up to six graduate programs, and I'll show those in a moment. Five of those are available online, and the sixth will actually be available online a year from now. We're supporting 29 College of Business student organizations, and that's a, that's a strategic move on our part. It ties into our, our focus on experiential learning that I'll talk about in just a little bit. And we get guidance from 12 plus, and I'll explain the plus in a moment, advisory councils and boards. At the college level, we've got an executive advisory council. Each department has an advisory board, and then many of our programs actually have their own advisory boards. And that would include like our entrepreneurship advisory board. We've got one for interior design, for mechanical engineering technology, construction management. In fact, our construction management advisory board just learned that they're going to be uh, MSU's advisor of the year uh, or receive the advisor of the year award if it bears a distinction dinner in just a couple of weeks. The plus is we've got two more groups, uh, majors, currently looking to form advisory boards. So it's a great opportunity for alumni to get engaged, uh, give back, and help guide our curriculum. And, and obviously when we get industry input, it ensures that our students are career ready and, and do well when they're getting placed. Most of everyone thinks of the College of Business being in Glass Hall, but we're now in three locations. Across the parking lot to the south of Glass Hall, we've got Kemper Hall. There we've got offices, labs, classrooms, 
for our mechanical engineering technology program and construction management. And down on the square in the Park Central Office building, we've got our interior design and our merchandising and fashion design programs. And they also have offices, classrooms, and labs in that space. We are planning to actually move uh, the faculty and the students that are at that Park Central building to Glass Hall. We're hoping to have them here by the fall of 23. We have three accreditations and, and most uh, graduates in the college are familiar with the uh, AECSB that covers all of our business programs and we have supplemental accreditation and accounting, uh, which obviously speaks to the quality of our faculty, our facilities, our curriculum, our students. But we also have uh, our construction management program uh, accredited by ACCE. On Monday and Tuesday of this week, we hosted the uh, team for our accreditation effort. They have no concerns, so we expect that to, uh, a new accreditation to occur later this year. And then our master's in project management has got uh, the GAC accreditation uh, through the uh, Project Management Institute. In fact, we were one of the first programs in the country to get our master's in project management certified. And this summer, we expect to add one more accreditation. We uh, have completed the candidacy for ABET accreditation, uh, which is an engineering technology accreditation. And we'll be getting that from the Mechanical Engineering and Technology Program. A couple of more kind of by the numbers I thought I'd share with you, uh, ties in with the Onward Upward campaign. So this year, uh, our, we have students uh, that are benefiting from 268 donor-funded scholarships that total about 357,000. So on average, the students receive over $1,300 per award. And that's great. But what's even better with the Onward Upward campaign, we're actually adding over $100,000 to that in the scholarship uh, awards that we are currently reviewing the applicants for. So next fall, that number will climb over 450,000. And that will include at least 40 additional $200,000, 40 additional $2,000 awards for College of Business students. So we're helping them get to the finish line. And then I think this last bullet point gives you a sense of how well we're doing in helping them place. And I gave you three years of placement data because I thought you'd be curious to see how the pandemic may have impacted things. So pre-pandemic, academic year 1819, 91% placement rate. And again, that means they're going into jobs that they were prepared for, or, or they may be going on to grad school, or they're going into the military. During the pandemic, we dropped a little bit initially, found an 87% placement rate. And then in academic 2021, this past year, coming kind of out of it, up, we're back up to 95%. And based on what we're seeing in terms of our career fairs, employer of the day programs and the interviewing schedule, we expect this year, academic year 21-22, to be at or exceed that 95%. So we're, we're doing really well, both in permanent placement, but also in internships that are really taking off. This is a, a couple of quick photos. The, photo, the top photo on the right, that's actually our business career fair. It's reached the size that's held at the Expo Center. Um, and then down below, that's actually an advisory board member for one of our advisory boards that was there interviewing students for his company this past fall. Just some quick stats. The uh, career fairs were held in September. And again, you have to remember, last September, firms were still kind of looking at what's the impact of the pandemic. The School of Accountancy attracted 32 firms, and those firms were looking for accounting and finance. So the finance students are invited to that. The College of Business Career Fair attracted 107 uh, unique firms. And that was our other majors beyond accounting and finance, although some, some firms did look at accounting students at that event. And during the pandemic, we added virtual, a virtual career fair. And, and based on the popularity of that, we continued with this fall, for this past fall, and 47 firms participated. That was a total of 155 unique employers. Now that's down slightly from where we were pre-pandemic. But we're looking at the activity we're having in our employer of the day program and again firms that are still coming to campus to interview and, and contacting us to get a hold of students for virtual interviewing. We expect that there'll be over 200 firms this year recruiting College of Business graduates. So it's a good time to be a biz bear and looking for a job. And who are they recruiting? And just this uh, quick graph gives you a sense of where the students are distributed. Most of our academic departments have eight to 12%. Finance, I need a, a quick explanation on that. Finance is 12% of the, uh, the pie of, of business students. 
but general business is also in there. But remember, general business students are served by every department. They have to take classes in at least five different areas of the college uh, to earn their general business degree. And many of the students actually start taking classes with one of the other departments and end up changing their majors before they graduate. And then our risk management insurance is also in the finance and general business program. And in that program, we're starting to really place an emphasis on because there are not that many risk management insurance programs. So we think that's a niche that we can expand. I mentioned the breadth of our undergraduate majors. You can see here our, our 15 undergraduate majors, and then many of them do have specializations. I looked at those that were registering, and I know I'm a, I'm a former IT professor, and I saw we had several IT alums signed up. The IT program, for example, now, uh, to really place students well, we need to give them an emphasis in either app development, infrastructure, or cybersecurity. So we have three tracks in that area, but marketing has four. Uh, our finance area and our risk management can both have a couple of areas. So the good news about having a really large college is uh, having a large faculty means we've got more specialists. So we can actually offer more electives and it lets us offer more of these options or tracks. At the graduate level, again, I mentioned earlier what the six graduate programs, the MBA is still our flagship. It's over 500 students. Much of the growth in that area has been online, but our master's of accountancy program is growing. Uh, we have two IT related graduate programs now. MS Cyber has uh, grown over 30% the last two years, and each year it's grown over 30%. And then the MSIT program is the former MSCIS program that made this back to 1997. The master's health program is the only one in this list that hasn't grown for the last two years. And you might imagine the impact the pandemic has had on large health centers and on healthcare professionals that that program usually attracts. We're expecting that program's growth to pick back up as we go more into the endemic phase of COVID. And then that master's of project management program, we have both on campus and an online version of that, and both of those are growing. So again, as I mentioned earlier, much of our growth is actually now at the graduate level. I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about an emphasis on experiential learning. And you saw those placement rates that we have. A lot of that is a function of the career readiness of our grads. And the career readiness of our grads ties back to experiential learning. Over a decade ago, we decided that was going to be a key part of our strategic plan, and that actually influenced the plans to, to uh, expand and renovate Glass Hall, and it's continuing to impact our decisions today. When we think of experiential learning, some is indirect and some is direct. So we place a real emphasis in recruiting faculty that have professional experience that they can take into the classrooms and share that relevant experience. We're incorporating case studies into many of our classes so that students can actually take real world problems, analyze them and come up with recommendations and then spend time looking at what really occurred and what the outcomes were. We bring in a lot of guest speakers and traditionally for many of you as guest speakers came to Glass Hall, stood in front of the room. Today, we're actually having as many virtual speakers, both for our seated classes and our online classes. And then where we can, we've got students out doing observations or tours more forms of direct experiential learning, internships that I mentioned earlier. Every one of our programs in the college now has a required internship or comes an internship towards an elective course. So that's really increased the student interest in that area. A lot of our courses are focused on student service projects or the student organizations are involved in community service projects. We're doing a lot of course projects for local and regional businesses. There are basically many consulting projects where businesses will contact us, we connect them with a professor, and the students actually work on something that that business would like them to focus on. I mentioned earlier, we placed a real emphasis on student organizations, and we're up to 29 of those. And I'll talk a little bit about what the benefits are of that in a little bit. Experiential learning labs, uh, we did a, a big investment when we did the renovation project. Then I'll talk about a new lab that we're gonna be bringing online this fall. And then student competitions. And the student competitions is very important to us. And I'll talk about what the value is for the college and the students in just a moment. So the, really the remainder of the presentation will be focused on the labs and the competitions. 
In terms of experiential learning labs, and, and I'm going to focus on Glass Hall, we also have some in Kemper and down at Park Central Office. But these are our newer lineups on the uh, first floor, the BKD LLP, BKD Wealth Advisors Financial Trading Lab. That uh, lab has uh, 12 Bloomberg terminals available to students. Uh, the students can have part access whenever cl investment classes are not meeting in there, the students can go in and work on those. Our CFA Research Challenge team spends much of the spring semester in there preparing for their competition. The Tim Foote and Mike Odom family's peak performance uh, sales lab, uh, multiple rooms uh, with video capability where students can do one-on-one uh, -on -one or one-on uh, small group sales presentations. We hold sales competitions where companies come in and actually have their students go through uh, presentations for their product or service. And so the students are competing uh, in their classes and those real world projects. The McDonald's Student Entrepreneurship Lab multiple spaces on the first floor to support our entrepreneurship students. The Marlin Think Tank for Creative Learning is used by multiple classes in our building, and I'll show a photo of that in a moment and talk about how the AND team is leveraging that. And then we've added an IT infrastructure and cybersecurity lab. I came in 1990 as an IT professor, and that was one thing that I thought was lacking. It took us a, a few more years than I was expecting, um, but when I became Dean, that became a priority. And we now have an, an IT infrastructure and cybersecurity class or lab that supports multiple IT classes. And this fall, uh, we're in the final planning stages to actually put together an accounting analytics lab. Uh, we're real excited about that. Uh, changes in the, um, uh, the CPA exams and the new emphasis focusing on technology. Uh, it's critical that we give students the uh, state-of-the-art tools, and we need a lab to be able to do that. Just a few quick photos in the upper left there. That's actually the financial trading lab on the first floor it has a ticker running continuously above it. Since we put that in, it's not surprising. We've seen a growth in finance students and financial planning students. On the right on the top there, that's the IT infrastructure lab. Having a lab like that's very beneficial. We can keep it off the grid, which allows us to actually teach um, hacking techniques and how to defend hacking techniques that one wouldn't want students doing on a university network. We also have been using that space to compete in some national cybersecurity competitions. Lower left corner is the, uh, the Marlin Think Tank. You can't see it, but one wall of that entire one wall uh, to the left actually is a whiteboard from floor to ceiling. Got video conferencing capability on both sides of the room divider that you see there. The ad team spends the spring semester in that space, putting through, uh, putting together an ad campaign, typically for a national competition. So it becomes kind of a quasi ad agency each spring. And on the lower right, that's one of the rooms in the peak performance uh, sales line. A couple of close-ups to maybe bring it a little bit more to life. The investment classes meet in there, and, and those are those tables you see are in pods of four, and. Each group of four students has a Bloomberg terminal available. And again, outside of class time, the students can card in and out anytime the building is open. And again, in this space, this is where the companies would come in and uh, they might come in one week and tell the students, here's our product or service, get ready. And then the next week they come back and they have, actually have the students do the pitches. We use a, a product called GoReact to film that. Faculty, uh, or the, in that case, companies can actually view the videos. The software has the ability to put voiceovers so in real time, students can see what they're doing and get feedback. We also can then uh, put text into it so they can be still seeing and hearing their presentation and getting, if you would, prompt some of what they're doing well and not doing so well. And this facility also lets students do uh, or prepare MP4 uh, examples of their sales techniques that they can share, if you would, like a portfolio uh, to a, a prospective employee. This Marlin Think Tank, again, this has been one of the most popular rooms. A lot of our classes that want to go in and really spend time collaborating, come up with creative solutions, strategy meetings, et cetera. This room is also borrowed, uh, especially in the summer, by a lot of local firms. And they want to get away, kind of a retreat environment. So I use this space uh, to be able to hold meetings and, and many retreats. Again, this is that IT infrastructure and cybersecurity lab. And I should mention, uh, since we're talking about the Onward Upward campaign, 
much of the equipment in this space was actually donated by corporate partners to recruit our students. And that really helped us get that built quickly. I'll talk about this is one of the areas of one of our funding priorities going forward to be able to uh, invest a little bit more to upgrade uh, some of this. I mentioned student competitions and the experiential labs have really made a difference there. We think of those competitions as a way to build our brand as a college and certainly the individual students brand. It's probably the best experiential learning there is beyond internships. Great opportunity to showcase students' skills, help them build their resumes. We're finding that it's attracting employers. That young man on the right, Nino Perez, won the National Cybersecurity uh, Championship at the USITT Collegiate Conference just before the pandemic hit. And you can imagine the employers that were looking at that competition said that, that, that student came from Missouri State. So who did they call? The College of Business. We would get them connected with our ITC department. And now some of those firms that were looking at the talent of that competition are recruiting directly from our campus. Students on the bottom actually are graduate students. They went to the uh, semifinals of an MHA uh, case competition. Well, again, not surprisingly, health for organizations that are actually help sponsor that conference are looking at the students that are competing. So there's the potential for them to win cash prizes and also network for potential uh, employment opportunities. I know many of you have heard about our ad team. Their success is unbelievable. It's unusual for them not to place first. This past year, they finished second. And interestingly enough, a second place ad campaign earned them a $3,000 prize, and they parlayed that in to actually getting over a $640,000 grant from Homeland Securities. And some of those students in a couple of different offices on campus are now partnered with the Springfield Area Schools, and they're actually implementing the ad campaign that they came up with as part of that competition. This is uh, this year's CFA Research uh, Challenge Team. Three of our finance students on the left, and Dr. Seth Holscher that teaches in our investment area, uh, also is their faculty advisor. And one of our alumni that works for BKND is actually the industry advisor for the team. These students won the uh, CFA uh, Society in Kansas City's competition. They're now competing at a sub-regional level. And if they continue to win, they'll have a chance to compete in the Americas uh, competition in about a month. It's, uh, construction management students went up to the uh, ASC competition. Most of the schools there are Big 10, Big 12. They have five competitions. We managed to place in four of the five. We got first in three of the five. And then two of our teams actually placed in two more of those uh, categories. Uh, most of the schools there, again, have engineering programs uh, and they have much larger uh, construction management programs. So for our students to be able to compete at that level in this group and some of those photos I've shown you demonstrates, I think, the quality of our faculty, the relevance of our curriculum. And again, that's coming from input from industry. Our future business leaders of the association, uh, we have a Phi Beta Lambda uh, chapter on campus this past spring. We got one of our students got first place in entrepreneurial concepts and another student placed sixth and ninth in the country. So they're competing against the, the 50 best students around the country. Uh, so they had to win the state competition and then they went on to, to represent Missouri in the national. And again, this, uh, this ad campaign I mentioned before, that all. This uh, slide, the US ITCC regionals that uh, Lino Perez I mentioned uh, before that won the, the national cybersecurity competition. We uh, compete in a regional to go to the national. This year in the regional, uh, we took, we placed in more events than any other school. So we got the overall first place award. Unfortunately, uh, they canceled the national competition. There were so many schools that still had restrictions for traveling that they decided to uh, cancel and they're gonna renew the national competition next year. So very disappointing news for all of these students that would have qualified to be able to go to the nationals this year. We wouldn't get that many students uh, to that many competitions in place as well as we did. We didn't have outstanding faculty. And I wish I had time to, to, call, to talk about all 100 of them. For today, I'll just try to give you a sampling. Kim Church, who came to us two years ago as our new SOA director. 
uh, also teaches in the accounting area. She was named uh, by the Missouri CPA Society as the outstanding educator for 2021. Jacob Nelson teaches in our construction management program. He received the MACC Educator of the Year Award. It's not a surprise. He's taken team their last three competitions, national competitions. His teams have placed fifth, third, and second. And then Jim Skiba, over our most recent spring break, went with a group of our marketing students to the American Marketing Association meeting in Chicago. And she got a surprise. She was named the AMA's 21 Outstanding Faculty Advisor. And this list goes on. In just the last couple of years, we've had our faculty recognized as the outstanding educators at the national level and at the international level. We're really blessed to have the quality of the faculty that we have, and it's really paying off for our students in terms of having advisors for student organizations, being prepared to go to competitions, and certainly preparing them for their internships and then their full-time jobs. Within the university, the highest awards for our faculty are given by the foundation. So the MSU Foundation Awards for Excellence are given for teaching, research, and service. And they only get two awards in each of those categories annually. As you can see here, since 2018, 2019, four College of Business faculty have been recognized. Dr. Ed Chang, Dr. Carol Miller, and Dr. Panit Prakash have all received research awards. And Dr. Kent Reagan in 2019-2020 received a teaching award. And again, with only, with only six of these given a year, and in some years, six aren't even awarded. Sometimes it's less than two per category. For one college to have that level of success, again, speaks volumes, I think, to the quality of the faculty that we have in the college. I can't tell all of our stories today, but we're trying to do our best uh, through the new magazine that we put together for the College of Business. When I became dean, one of my, my goals was to try to engage faculty a little more. And I thought that getting stories about, about the success of our students and alumni and faculty might serve as a platform for that, and it has. So the fall editions on the left, uh, and the most recent edition that just went through mail, went in the mail about a week ago, uh, should be arriving if you haven't gotten it. If you haven't seen any of these in your mailbox, I'd encourage you to take a moment to jump into the chat and uh, share your current mailing address, name and mailing address with the alumni staff, and they'll ensure that we get you in the database so you can get future issues. issues. The next one will come out before homecoming next fall. But each fall and spring, we're going to continue to put these out. And I'm usually asked, what's next? You know, we've done a lot. We've uh, added graduate programs. We've expanded our undergraduate offerings. We've renovated our, our building, uh, added all these experiential learning labs. So what we'd like to do is a handful of things, and all of them are resource dependent. One thing, and I'm sure that the advancement uh, folks would love to talk to someone about this. We still would like to get a college name index. We're one of the few colleges of business in the country our size that do not have a name index. Um, we would like to add more scholarships. I can tell you the need outseeds our ability to serve it. Each year, students visit with me about whether they can stay in school. And we're doing a lot, but we can do more uh, to help students because we think about increasing diversity and being more inclusive as a university. The financial piece is a big barrier for many families and many students. We've got that great financial trading lab. We would like to add a student managed investment fund. And so hopefully that's something that we'll be able to get going. And I say fund, but really we'd like that too. We'd like to have one for fixed income and one for equities where our students would actually be able to manage those uh, with an advisory board. We would like to add some additional fellowships and professorships. The Onward Upward campaign has been helping with that. And what those do, those are endowments that each year provide some additional funds that we can use to retain or, reta or retain or recruit faculty. And that's essential if we want to keep the quality of faculty that we have. I mentioned earlier, we would like to, uh, if you would, daylight our infrastructure and cybersecurity lab. We'd like to put a glass wall on that room so students can see what's going on. We'd like to upgrade some of the equipment and add some additional equipment. And then I mentioned our accounting analytics lab. We're currently finishing the plans for that and hoping to get some additional support for building it out in the fall. And then certainly being able to equip it with the equipment and the software. And then um, hopefully build up an endowment to be able to support that going forward. I'll pause there and, and turn it back over to Greg. I'll discontinue the screen share and, and let Greg get our Q&A going.
Greg, you're muted. Thank you. Uh, from my first Zoom ever, so just learning, you know. Um, no, I really appreciate the comprehensive update on the College of Business, and wow, what excitement is happening. Can um, I'll ask a couple questions, and it looks like we have a couple coming in. Um, Dean Monarch, talk about, and you did tee up it very well, if, if you're not receiving the magazine or you're not getting any newsletters out from the College of Business, do let us know, um, respond to us in the email that you've received, and we'd be glad to make sure that we plug, we'd be glad to plug you into it. But D minor, are there other opportunities for alumni to to get involved, um, whether that be advisory boards? You mentioned internships in, in the, the 29 student organizations. Is that how people would be a conduit into it? How can alumni get involved? Really, it starts by just reaching out. I got an email yesterday, Greg, from that magazine that just went out. Uh, someone in West Plains got it and said, hey, I'm in this area. I'd like to get engaged. And so we're connecting them back to the area they're closest to. Uh, they're interested in coming in as a guest speaker, either in person or, or virtual. We connect them to the faculty member that's most closely aligned with their profession. Mm -hmm. If someone's interested in an advisory board, I connect them either to the, um, the department head level, or if it's a particular major, maybe we've got a program coordinator or director, can we get them connected? If they've got, if they would like to hire interns, we get them connected to our career center that's in the building. So we've got someone that will quickly get them uh, up to speed and we use Handshake. We, if they don't use that already, we get them up to speed on how to get that posted. Then we push that out to our faculty or our students. If they wanna come on campus for an employer of the day and just introduce students to their company, uh, it's a soft recruiting event. We help arrange all of that. Great, thank you. Um, can you talk a bit about the um, the footprint of the College of Business, not only on Missouri State's campus, and you alluded to some of the competitions our students have gone out and, and had tremendous success at. Um, wh where does the College of Business rank in Midwest or national? Is it How is it being seen? And, um, and what can we do to elevate? Well, in terms of, of ranking, I think size is one indicator. You don't get to, we were over 5,000 students. And uh, at that point, we were in the top 50 in terms of undergraduate enrollment in the country. And uh, we get that from AECSB. All AECSB schools have to turn it in, so it's, it's great data. It allows us to benchmark. We can also look at the size of our graduate programs. Nationally, MBA programs were declining in enrollment, and our, we were going out, we were bucking the trend. So I think that tells you kind of where we stand in the Midwest. Again, um, even with this decline in enrollment, I've been able to pull data from other schools in the Midwest. We've declined at a slower rate than other schools. So again, I think we're, we've become a, a school, a business school destination, if you would. Not just for um, Missouri students. And we do get a lot of in-state students, but over close to 15% of our students now are coming from out of state. And that's really up dramatically. And then we're also uh, getting a significant number of international students, both in-person and online. And I didn't think to mention, we still have a China campus. Some of you have probably heard about the China, MSU's China campus. That is uh, a, a, in Dalian, China, Landing Normal University. And we currently have 800 students on that campus. That have about half of them are supported by the MSU West Plains campus doing an AA degree. And the other half are actually taking College of Business courses. Great. Um, Dean Minard, Ariel Smith chimes in, and she's uh, she's an alumni from the entrepreneurship program, and she's currently working um, at one of the top universities in Guatemala, um, and she would love to reconnect with the College of Business. I'm going to share you uh, share with you her email, um, and um, and she's hoping to collaborate with you and, uh, and 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 to enjoy the the value of the learning experience for her students there in Guatemala. Um, Mark Campbell comes in from from Lebanon. Mark, um, he's a recent in the recent College of Business Connection and in today's presentation, he was intrigued by the Peak Performance Sales Lab. Do alumni have access to this lab for improvement of their sales skills? It's interesting. We, uh, with the two individuals that made that possible, both alums live in Colorado that I got to meet when we were planning the building. Uh, they wanted us to open that up. We were actually kind of doing the trial run just before the pandemic, really getting everything the way we wanted it. And they had both asked us to see if we could open it up to alums, local businesses, et cetera. So we are open to doing that. And now that the pandemic is kind of waning, we're hoping to actually be able to invite companies to come on site and use that facility, particularly in like what we would consider our off season, the summers, that space is under new lights. Okay, terrific. Um, you mentioned a number of 
the award-winning faculty and, and certainly some of the impact that uh, your advisory boards have had. I would, would be remiss if I did not mention that the Construction Management Advisory Board um, will be honored this year at the Bears of Distinction Award Ceremony. They will receive the Volunteer Group of the Year Award. Uh, Brad Thomas, who is the president of the Silver Dollar City uh, Silver, Dollar, Silver Dollar City Attractions, was on the call. Um, Brad will be receiving the Outstanding Alum Award, um, our top award given, our, our, one of the top awards given to alumni each year. Congratulations to Brad and um, and Sam Coriel, who's a graduate of the Construction Management Program, will receive a Bears. Of, of excellence award. So alumni doing great things in the community out there um, who, are, who are graduates of the College of Business. Um, looking forward to celebrating them in a couple of weeks. Um, let's see here, Greg Glass chimes in. He says, uh, thank you, Dean Meinart, for the discussion today. It's great to see such great success stories from our business program. Question on recruiting. Schools like Arkansas are using in-state tuition enticements for high school students in the KC area to attend the, that university. Are there any plans to take a similar approach to help drive enrollment from this area to MSU? Speaking of- I, I can't get into the real depth on this, but we're already doing some of that. Students with certain GPAs, certain ACTs, you can bring from outside uh, of Missouri. And that's one of the reasons we're starting to see some of that increase on the, uh, in, on the out of state student side. And uh, we were a member of MOGO, which allowed students from other Midwest states to also come in. So. MSU is trying to be competitive uh, right now with the number of students uh, um, decreasing nationally, the number of high school graduates, and certainly the number of students going on to college, everyone's trying to be a little more competitive. So it's like a, it's ratcheting up. It's, one of the questions becomes, how much do you discount tuition? You know, higher ed, is, higher ed cannot just have a space where it's to discounting tuition. There is a point where there's going to have to be a leveling because certainly that you have to have the revenue to be able to run the universities. Thanks, Dave. And then a follow-up to the sales lab. Uh, Dalton Fisher says um, that, that the sales lab was mon monumental for himself and the sales program. Before the lab existed, we were using any conference room or open classroom we could find. Very gracious and, and appreciate all of the alumni for their gifts and support to create that sales lab. So for those of you out there who may have participated in that, thank you very much. Um, I think we'll get you off the hot seat here, Dave. And turn it over to Brent, um, who's traveling. So Brent uh, Dunn, our Vice President for Advancement and Executive Director of the Missouri State Foundation, um, please uh, share a few words with us. Sure, thank you. So yeah, Dave uh, mentioned this several times that we're in the Onward Upward campaign to raise $250 million for a variety of things. Uh, scholarships, faculty support, capital support, program support. And so here's a date I would like everybody to put on their calendar, October 29th of this year. Uh, that's an important date because we are celebrating the campaign. That is our last official day uh, of the campaign. And that week actually is homecoming week on campus. So a lot of things going on uh, Thursday, Friday, of course, Saturday, the parade, the football game. Uh, but Saturday night is going to be in JQH Arena. And our chairman of the campaign uh, is John Goodman, probably our most well-known uh, alum in the world. And he's chaired the campaign from the beginning. And he, along with some other special guests that will be announced later on, uh, hopefully this summer, uh, we'll be participating in. It's a, just a show. It's a fun show, but you're going to see the before and after pictures, basically, what the campus looked like when, when and felt like when we started the campaign and what it feels like and looks like when we end the campaign on October 29th. You still have time to participate uh, by being a part of the campaign. Actually, 60,000 people have already participated in the campaign and we anticipate those numbers are going to go up uh, through October 29th. So that is my advertisement uh, to put that date on your calendar and come back to campus. Uh, everything is back to normal. Uh, we will have uh, big crowds. Uh, we anticipate through the whole week. Uh, football, we're good at football. It will be a good game and it's just fun atmosphere and celebrating 
what you just heard from Dean Minert and celebrating from all our academic deans and, and all areas of the university that the campus is better. And the better we are, uh, the better off our educational programs and ultimately those students go out and literally change the world. So join us on October 29th. Thank you, Brent. And, uh, and Dean Minard, um, we'll, we'll pull you back in real quick and I'm gonna give you the last word uh, to share with the group here. Before I do, just wanna do a small commercial. Um, we, we have uh, a number of positions available here at the Alumni Association. One in particular is uh, just launched this week called the Assistant Director for College and Constituency Engagement. Uh, for, for those of you out there who may be connected to or, or have interest in this work to, to be involved with alumni and serve and, and be integrated with the colleges, that's what this position is going to do uh, 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 with, with the collaboration with Dean Minard and the, his and his team. Uh, we look forward to growing programming, uh, engaging alumni around um, the College of Business and, and how we engage and connect you back to the institution. We'll also have another position called Assistant Director of Corporate and Chapter Engagement. Um, for strategic businesses out there to Missouri State, we'll look to create formal relationships and, and perhaps bring faculty into these corporations that have bears working in them. So if you'd like to learn more about those positions, uh, by all means, please reach out. We'd love to hear from you. So uh, Dean Minard, we're gonna turn it back over to you to kind of share any last words of wisdom that you'd like to share with the audience. I just wanna thank everyone for joining and thank everyone for what you've done to open doors for today's students. Much of our reputation comes from the success of our alumni. And when recruiters come here, they often talk about how they have recruited from here, they've retained MSU Bears and they've promoted those Bears. And they wouldn't keep coming back if we didn't have our alumni performing. So again, thank all that you do for keep opening those doors. Great. Thank you, Dean Minard. And thank you to everybody for joining uh, this afternoon's conversation with the College of Business and Dean Minard. We do appreciate his time and appreciate your time. It's a great day to be a bear, we like to say here. And um, I hope everyone's doing well where you called in from. Um, we really appreciate you and uh, for, your, for, um, for all of your support. Um, we'll sign off here and say, go Bears. <laughs>